Welcome to the second part of this recording on the dramatic resignation of Rosalina Kombe, one of the commissioners of the IEBC. Now, before we proceed with the other parts, uh, with the other points, yeah, about the repercussions and the consequences of this resignation, um, I just want to respond to some breaking news which happened uh, just uh, as I was finishing off the first part of this recording, the editing and all that. Yeah, and this is the reaction from State House. Now, this is high stakes PR. Yeah, I want all of you to understand this has been a PR and propaganda government, very concerned about perception more than anything else. Yeah, in terms of how they're running the government. Okay. Since 2013, they've managed to create a mirage that all is well, that this government is all inclusive, that this government does not have much corruption, that this government is running like a well oiled uh, machine, etc. etc. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Now, one of the basics of uh, uh, damage control, uh, PR, and propaganda is the timing of a response. Okay, something major has happened against you. So, how do you respond? Now, if you take too long to respond, the longer you take uh, to respond, the guiltier you look. The quicker you respond, the less guilty you look. Yeah, that's a basic, okay? And of course, uh, it's not surprising that hours later after Combe's resignation, the president addresses the nation, okay? Now, very interesting in his address to the nation, he does not touch on the resignation at all. How can he? What can he say? Yeah, so instead, uh, we are told that uh, the country is going to go into prayer, yeah, everybody should pray in mosques, uh, churches, etc., etc., and then this will come culminate in a day of prayer for the nation on Sunday. Yeah, and then the last part of that statement is very interesting. All this should happen in preparation for the election on 26th, as scheduled. Wow. You mean these guys can't see it yet? <laughs> it is there in black and white in front of you now, Uoni. <laughs> this is very interesting. As a nation, we are supposed to ignore all that Rosalind Akombe has said. We are supposed to ignore the implications and the repercussions and the reasons why Ros uh, Rosalind Akombe resigned. And we are supposed to pray on Sunday and then wait to go ahead with the uh, scheduled elections on the 26th. Hey, what? Actually, this should not be surprising. Yeah, It should not be surprising to those who know that uh, the presidency has been taken over by hardline advisors from the last century. <laughs> People who still think the year is 1970-something. Yeah? People who still think that uh, the country is a de facto one-party state. Yeah? People who think that the KPU was banned. You know, the Kenya People's Union of uh, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga was banned just the other day and only a few years have passed and things are the same, public ni ile ile, yes, uh, the reaction of the people ni ile ile, education of the masses ni ile ile, etc, etc. Now all these advisors, I am certain, are going to be answerable to God one day. One day, they are going to be answerable, okay, because they are driving the country to the edge, yeah, to the edge of the abyss. Anyway, what else can the government do? You remember I said in an early recording that uh, when you make this kind of mistakes at this level, what will happen is that you'll find yourself with fewer and fewer options going forward. Yeah? F until you reach a place whereby you'll have zero options. <laughs> that is exactly how it works out. But there's something of uh, much greater interest I want to draw your attention to. Actually, I put it to you that the Jubilee government this morning it make an emergency brakes. Yeah, you know, in a vehicle, and you're traveling at a certain speed, uh, let's say over 80 kilometers an hour, yes, and then very far, well, some meters ahead, you see an elephant crossing the road, a baby elephant, yeah? You step on the brakes. <coughs> emergency brakes. That's exactly what you believe I've done this morning. And I'll explain why. Now, this is one of the basics of correct political analysis. All events are related, okay? Now, uh, in the early hours of this morning, before the Akombe news broke, yeah, I put it to you, the government already knew she had bolted. Okay? They were already aware that uh, she, was no longer in, um, she was no longer in Dubai, yes, and they were aware that she has bolted. And they were also aware that there was a very high probability 
that wherever she would land next, she was going to start singing like a bird. <laughs> now bear in mind that it takes a very long time to fly from Dubai to New York. Yeah, a very long time. That's why I was telling you New York ni Bali. Okay? Will you believe that a non-stop flight from Dubai to New York, the fastest way, you know, the fastest flight you can get non-stop, yeah, which is uh, rare, uh, it's not very easy to get, yeah? Direct from Dubai to New York takes, wait for it, 14 hours and 45 minutes. What? That means that the government was aware at least 10 hours before she arrived uh, in New York that uh, Akombe had bolted. Okay, at least 10 hours. Um, maybe even fewer hours because there's no evidence emerging that Akombe played her cards very intricately. You remember the leaked uh, meeting between her and uh, Evans Monari, the president's lawyer? Remember that? And it was leaked and people were so mad about her and everybody knew this woman is just Jubilee Dam. You remember that? Yeah. It appears she was preparing herself to bolt and it took a long time. That's why I told you in the first uh, episode of this series that Akombe is smart. Eh? Kuna kitu katkate yo maskio. Yeah? She's smart. It appears that she played an intricate plan. Yeah? Uh, she made herself look like she was on the side of the government fully. Yes? And so that, you know, uh, attention would be diverted away from her. Giving her enough loopholes, giving her enough space to escape from the clutches of those who killed Msando. Okay? That's really what it was. Anyway, back to my point. The government knew quite a number of hours before she made a statement that she had bolted. Okay? Now, in the early hours of this morning, the government were preparing to do a major operation inside the house of uh, Jimmy Wanjiki. The police had already maliciously destroyed property, private property of uh, Bwana Wanjiki. Yeah? And now in the process there are several uh, GSU personnel brought in the place of a hundred. Yeah, and you know this is one man, eh? <laughs> he's not even armed. Yeah. How do we know this? We know this because they asked uh, Raila Odinga was at the home, yeah, the right honorable Raila Odinga, to leave the premises. And this was after a few hours earlier telling him that now he was not allowed to leave the premises. <laughs> I'm telling you, these guys are just funny. Okay, so Raila Odinga is under house arrest in Jimmy Wajigi's house. Okay, then they come and they tell him, now we, we want to ask you to leave. And it's not the house, yeah? They have got no legal obligation, no obligation whatsoever to ask anybody either to leave or not to leave or arrive, etc., etc. Yeah? So anyway, they come and tell him that uh, they want him to leave because there's an operation they want to carry, you know, they didn't make any secret of it. They said there's an operation they want to carry out. Of course, the whole idea is part of a larger plot uh, to sell the idea to the Kenyan public that uh, NASA are planning armed, uh, an armed uh, coup, yes, to overturn the government using arms, yes. Uh, if, you, if you take in my recording, sensitive recording within Club 1999, you'll understand a little more on this issue, yeah? You'll understand a little more of these very confusing, bizarre decisions that are being made, okay? And then the next thing the people in the house realize, the cops are gone. Which means they abandoned the operation. Which means that somebody had a second thought. Now I put it to you, this second thought had a lot to do with the expected Akombe singing like a bird. Okay? Now that expression might be new to you, but it's very popular uh, in mafia movies. Yeah? Apparently this is what mafia guys used to say, you know, when a guy decides to talk to cops. Eh? Hey, that guy's going to sing like a bat to the cops, huh? Yeah, that's what they used to say. So, <laughs> wow. So they were waiting, and they knew that something was going to break. Okay? Now, you can imagine, the cops have raided the uh, Wanjigi house. They've caused damage. They've done whatever they were going to do. And then this statement breaks. It would have made the government look very bad. Well, already the government is looking extremely bad. So bad that it cannot be repaired but it would have been worse. So some sense, yeah, must have come in. So I put it to you that a combe statement saved Wanjigi. Or in other words, a combe's uh, flight 
yeah, uh, her running away, her bolting, plus the statement, saved Jimmy Wanjige and the family. Okay? Because let me tell you something that you might not know. These people don't care. The government doesn't care. Well, how can they care? When uh, a toddler was clobbered to death inside the house, the mother was not protesting. They were in fact asleep. Okay? And a few days ago, a two-year-old, yeah, get this, a two-year-old girl, this policeman, whoever it was, took aim carefully and shot a kid playing in a playground. Nothing to do with protesters. The kid was not protesting. The kid was playing with other kids. This is not a stray shot. Hey, it's not a stray shot at all. It was aimed. Somebody took aim and pressed the trigger. So you want to tell me such a government cares or gives a hoot what you think? Hey, you'd better have another think coming if you think they give a hoot. Okay? Now, of course, the other thing that saved Jimmy Wanjiga a lot was that this, uh, this armed siege of the Jimmy Wanjiga residence had, of course, attracted enormous attention from the international press. Okay? The whole world was watching. Okay? So they might not care very much what you, mean, you, what you and me think, but they care a little what the world thinks. Yeah, because the world has got power yeah, to do something about it. Let me just leave it at that. Well, let's take a short break. We have not even uh, touched on this second part because I interrupted it to give you that heads up. Yeah, I'll be back shortly. Welcome back. Now, you can put everything in perspective. You can imagine a president coming out to tell the country to pray, yeah, after his government, yeah, with instructions coming from his office right inside the state house, leads, laid siege, yeah, in the home of a private uh, citizen, yes, uh, in the private home of a Kenyan. They interrupted his uh, privacy, they invaded his privacy. They did not have any such warrant. They did not have any arrest warrant. Nothing. And then one of the IABC commissioners escapes. Yeah? And while in New York, very far away, issues a statement that tells Kenya, confirms to Kenyans exactly what we thought, what we feared was going on inside the IABC. Yeah? You can imagine. So that same president comes out and gives a statement. Or oh, uh, you guys go into prayer. You know, we're going to have a national prayer day on Sunday, blah, blah, blah. Elections are going to go forward on 26th. You can see how ridiculous that looks now. But that's Kenya for you, and that's the current situation. Spend or spend, that's how it is. Now, why did uh, Akombe's statement, or rather her escape, uh, force uh, Jubilee government to, to apply emergency breaks yeah, to whatever they were doing? Okay? Now, I think the reason is obvious. The reason is... What Akombe knows, she knows too much. As the mafia would say, she knows too much. And when she starts singing like a bird, it's of grave concern to Jubilee government. Okay? Now it seems that what Akombe has told us so far is only a tip of the iceberg. Uh, maybe she saw that uh, it would be very hard for us to take it all in if she gave us everything in one press conference or one interview. Okay? So apparently her strategy is to give it in uh, bits and pieces. Yeah, shocker, and then say you may recover kidogo kwa you another shocker. Say you are reeling, but at least you're still in balance. Shocker number three. Yeah. Now and already there's evidence of that. Okay. In a tweet, yeah, released uh, a few minutes before I started doing this recording, yeah, she reveals that a few days ago she witnessed Bwana, the chairman of the IABC, Wafula Chebukati, change his mind about handing in his resignation through a press conference he was going to call, she witnessed the guy changing his mind at gunpoint. A gun was being pointed at him to make him change his mind. What? Now we need to know that uh, Bwana Chibukati is the only lawyer 
in the IBC or the JEBC. Yeah, he's the only lawyer in the Jubilee Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Okay, and as because he's a lawyer, he understands the consequences, the repercussions, you know, the legal implications of what is being done inside there. Okay, now unfortunately, it seems most of the commissioners there, they just know Serikali Konangovu. Serikali will save us. Yeah, Serikali will be behind us 100%. After all, we're doing their dirty work. Oh. Anyway, you know, they have the democratic right to make their own decisions. Eh? Yeah? But uh, Chebukati is fully and very much aware because he's a lawyer, yeah? and not only just an ordinary lawyer, an experienced lawyer, yes, uh, qualified to be a high court judge. Yes, that's a very experienced lawyer who understands the law very well. Yeah? And uh, the guy is even more worried uh, about what will happen next. Okay, and apparently also Chebukati is old enough and uh, neutral enough. Yeah, I'm not saying it's totally neutral, but it's neutral enough to have been able to stand back and read the si the clear signs of the wall, to read the writing of the wall. Yeah, that things are changing in Kenya, and that there's no guarantee that the government which protects you to do dirty work is going to be there forever. Yeah, uh, in fact, let me rephrase that: there's no guarantee that the government which is protecting you to do your dirty work will be around in the next few months, let alone forever, yeah? And so the most logical thing to do is you resign and you say a gun was being held to your head the whole time. That's your defense, yeah? So whatever legal uh, consequences will come upon the commissioners at a future date, yeah, will not befall you, yes? But Akombe tells us, the guy was told, uh-uh, and a gun pointed at his head, uh-uh. Here -uh. it Hey, yeah. Now I'm sure this will shock most Kenyans. Yeah, I've been a bit privileged in my life in that uh, being the son of a cop, I have seen many things about how some certain uh, parts of uh, government how they work. I've also heard uh, very clearly how these guys work, what they've been capable of, what they have done in the past. Yeah, uh, my dad has pointed me to a lot of very very funny things. Yeah, that have been done within government. Yes. And so uh, I've been able to reveal to you that there's some dark forces and I've been able, even without being there, yeah, to imagine fairly accurately how they're going about their business, okay? But to most Kenyans, this has come as a big shock. You mean there's some people within IBC? You mean the government can put pressure like this on IBC? You mean guns can be pointed at the heads of people? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And it's happening. It's happening before your very eyes. Na mambo bado, tena mambo bado sana. I believe if a combe keeps on singing like a bird, we're going to get some absolutely amazing information coming through. Very amazing. So brace yourself. Jikaze. Yeah? Because we're go you're going to hear things that will make your ears ring. And this, was this is exactly what has caused the Jubilee government to apply emergency brakes. Okay? But apparently the brakes, the emergency brakes, whatever, do not stop them from hurtling forward, from soldiering on to elections on the 26th of October. Okay? But I've already told you yeah, in the previous episode, one of the implications of this uh, Akombe expose, yeah, these revelations from Akombe, is the fact that now you can be very sure there are going to be no elections on the 26th of October. Okay? And I've told you why. The all-powerful government, of course, does not see that yet, yeah, but it's going to become clear to them very soon, yeah, uh, and even when it does, they will not stop, okay, because this is a question of retaining power at all costs, yes, and one of the ways of retaining power is to have an election on the 26th, because if there's no election on the 26th, retaining that power will be that much more difficult, and that is a fact. Why? Because if there's no election on the 26th, the country is going to enter what is called a grey area, an area which is not covered by the constitution, an eventuality not envisaged in the constitution, yeah, which will mean now people will have to decide to sit down and discuss with the opposition, which Jubilee do not want to do. Okay? Why don't they want to do it? It should be pretty obvious. Because the minute they start sitting down with the opposition to discuss, it means that will start taking a direction closer to free and fair elections, 
which Jubilee do not want at all costs. Why? Because it should be very obvious. They know in their knowing that there's no way they can win a free and fair election in Kenya today. It's as simple as that. And it's as obvious as that. Now, I've already told you non-stop flight time. The fastest non-stop flight time between Dubai and New York is 14 hours, 45 minutes, yeah? But uh, when you put factor in all the other things, circling the airport, clearance for landing, blah, 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 we're really talking about 17 hours. So Rosalind Nakombe had a lot of time to think about this, what she was about to do. She had a lot of time. She had plenty of time to strategize, yeah? She had plenty of time to put uh, in place a plan, yeah, that was the best plan possible to reveal what she knows, yeah, and in a way that would save her country, okay? Now, one of the questions she was asked in the interview was whether she planned to go back to Kenya. <laughs> her reply, I'm laughing because of her reply. She was very, very categorical in her reply. She did not see how she was going to return to Kenya in the near future, yeah? Yeah, that's how dangerous things are in our country. Now, unfortunately, uh, Akombe is very lucky. Most of us Kenyans do not have uh, that luxury of being able to run away to a very far away country, yeah, uh, when our lives are in danger. Yes, we just have to stick around and wait for the, to face the music. Yeah, we have to stay around and play the game of Paka Napanya, yeah, with the, the evil Jubilee government, yes, and uh, we just hope for the best. Well, our protection is God, yeah, and God will protect Kenyans, yeah. Now, uh, unfortunately, we have spent so much time on this. We'll have now to go to the next uh, episode, yes, but uh, I know already you've uh, managed to take in a lot of things, yes. So just digest that as I prepare the next uh, episode in this series, very interesting, captivating series of the Akombe resignation and the repercussion and, and repercussions and consequences. Brace yourselves for drama, been drama, been drama. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.